Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Kevin Bolding, the new CEO of the Greater Pittsburgh YMCA. Today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash no BS. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Our guest today is Kevin Bolding, a seasoned senior executive, has over 20 years of progressive impact in urban, suburban, and corporate communities. He's just recently been named the new CEO of the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh. So we, in episode one, talked through your career up through Miami and your decision to come back to Pittsburgh, being partially influenced by the great coverage of Pittsburgh at the G20. You've come to Pittsburgh now. You've been here six and a half years. Give me your first impression of when you came to our city. So I'll jump to the end and say that Pittsburgh is the first city that I've been in that I've really started to feel like it's home. Um, Like I said, Detroit for 10 years and Detroit was great. A lot of great relationships there, a lot of good people. But I always left Detroit to go back to Virginia to go home. Um, Miami, same thing. Miami was wonderful. I mean, when you come up for air, you go back home to Virginia. <laughs> um, and but here in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh feels like home. And that's and I felt that from day one. From day one, the interesting thing about Pittsburgh is uh, my wife. She decided, well, okay, you're moving up in December. All right, you go ahead and do that. I'll come up in May. <laughs> so it was. I had good six months or so before Rhonda moved up. And during that time, it was almost, I felt like a free agent. People were trying to woo me to their communities. Were trying to show me, hey, you should come to my community. You should live in my community. Because I was have, I had temporary uh, housing downtown. Well, you should move into this community or that community. You know, have dinner with me over here. Have dinner with me over there. That would never happen in Detroit. That would never happen in Miami. In Miami, I've always believed that there are so many cultures and so many different languages spoken that nobody speaks because you don't know what language will be the predominant language at any given time. Um, but that just uh, did not happen in in Detroit or Miami. And so coming here, it was a little bit, it was a little off-putting initially because my Detroit guard was up thinking, <laughs> What do they really want? <laughs> Something, <laughs> Something's going on here. And once you kind of let down the guard and understand that Pittsburgh people are just Pittsburgh people, they love their communities, they are passionate and protective of their communities at the same time, um, and they really want everyone to embrace their community as being the best community. Um, and and once, you, once you understand that, then it becomes, really, it became a lot of fun. So I got a chance to see a lot of, really cool communities. Um, I learned really quickly that GPS here really is just about useless. So <laughs> it's just trying to get through these, these streets and everything else. You, you, you're you better off just following traffic patterns and just seeing where it takes you, which is how I, <laughs> how I learned how to get around the city. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot about what I learned about Pittsburgh and that and those first six months really just continued to echo for the last six years, which is uh, people are passionate about their communities and they love their communities and they're, you know, it's it's a very tight knit, close knit city. The No BS Marketing Podcast with Dave Mastovich is brought to you by Mass Solutions. Put our three step No BS process to work for you. Visit MassSolutions.biz today to take your marketing to another level. It's all about bold solutions, no BS. You're here for six and a half years now. Uh, at some point, you were made the chief operating officer. I want you to talk a little bit about that position yeah. and then talk about the exciting news with you moving into the CEO okay. role. Yeah, I, was, I moved into the chief operating position in December of 14. Um, so the function behind that one is to really make sure that all of our operating sites, um, we, we have sites that at least our branches that go from as far north as Wexford to as far kind of, well, south. We have a South Hills operation. We have uh, an operation out in Plum. And then we have three camps also. We have a camp in Zelianople and we have two camps in Somerset County. Uh, so we've got a pretty wide reach when we look at who we serve. 
serve and, and the job in that operations role is to make sure that the day-to-day business is going well. Um, the biggest challenge with it is trying to make sure that we're all pointing in the right direction. And so we we spent a lot of time over the last year putting together a strategic plan that's really all around harnessing the collective strength of the entire organization into one focused plan. Um, our plan is called One Why for All because we believe that um, that really every why, uh, when we work together, and then then now we're really as strong as we can possibly be. It doesn't, doesn't mean that local YMC CAs have to lose their autonomy. Um, it's actually quite the opposite. If, if you're out at the Western Y, for example, a Y that on their property does not have a pool and somebody comes up and says, well, you know, I'm interested in swim lessons. Well, okay, sure, I can help you. We have a pool downtown. We have a pool in, in, in Wexford. We have a pool here. We have a pool there. So trying to make sure that all of our branches and operations understand that they can leverage the collective properties, programs, resources of all the other whys that we have for the betterment of really all of our members. So it becomes a messaging issue in a lot of respects with making sure that internally everybody's communicating the same way and that they know the different opportunities of the whole organization beyond just their center. Correct. Yeah. Making sure that everyone understands the the opportunities that we all have as a why, making sure that we're all focused and going in the same direction. Um, you know, I always use the analogy of, of, you know, if you look at your hand and and you you know you kind of open up your hand and all of your fingers are pointing out in different directions. We were doing a lot of great work. We were just all going in a couple different directions. Uh, what we try to do now is if you now make that hand a fist, the impact of that work is so much stronger because now whatever direction we're going, we're all going in the same direction. Um, so we're focusing on growing our membership by making sure we have good quality programs in place that's going to welcome our families, making sure that people start to understand us as more than just a gym and swim, that we are indeed a charity that is worth support, um, and making sure that we find more and, and creative ways of partnering with other local um, organizations and institutions throughout the city. A couple quick stats I want to ask you about. How many total employees at the across the 18 and at corporate? So it varies greatly um, seasonally. You know, mm-hmm. summertime is peak time for us. So you get to summertime and there's a thousand ish. Um, and so with that time, that's when we bring on a lot of our summer camp staff and, and the numbers really start to swell. Um, throughout, other than that time, we've got roughly 200 full-time employees. The seasonal, the, the other part-time numbers vary also, but that numbers can be anywhere in the six to 700 range. And how many members in Pittsburgh? Um, members, we have uh, 14, 14,000 units. 14,000 households that we serve. Um, and and so within that, you'll have a variety of different people that can make up those different numbers. You know, when we when we do it, we count it as households that we're serving. So in one, my household, for example, there's three of us, but another household can have five. Uh, so the numbers vary um, uh, kind of seasonally also based on summertime or whatever else. Uh, our, ultimately, our goal is to get to a point where we're serving about one in 10 people in Allegheny County. Uh, right now, the numbers are closer to about 85,000. That's Kevin Bolding, the new CEO of the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh. I'm Dave Mastovich, your host on the No BS Marketing Show. When it comes to messaging, Kevin, we have to understand both our why, which as I read the Simon Sinek book about knowing your why, I thought that's great for companies. But for a marketing standpoint, you have to have two whys. The first why is our why or reason for being. And the second why is our customer's why or reason for buying. We then need to crystallize those two answers into one big idea, one memorable message that makes an emotional impact on your target audiences. So what's your big idea? So with an organization the size of our why and with our reach being pretty wide, um, at times it can be very difficult for us to just have that one core idea, even though I believe completely in everything in, in Cynic's book, it's a lot of that, a lot of that idea is what fed our strategic plan. That's actually how we started on it. Um, we started on the whole concept of, well, what would it take for us to serve one in 10 people in Allegheny County? Um, and then we had to back it out and say, well, my, wow, we went through a lot of work to come to this point, um, but we realized that we, we still weren't asking the right why. 
the right why is, well, why do you still want to serve one in 10 people in Allegheny County? And for us, it's because we believe we can be an organization that helps to change Pittsburgh and, and helps to change families for the better. Um, we try to make sure that we focus on our programs and services being the types of services that can help families grow stronger. And when you understand that families can be defined in a host of different ways, that's a very all-encompassing vision, I would say. So help families grow stronger. And then your messaging standpoint, you have the one why for all. Correct. So those kind of tie together. They're you nice. Know, help, help families grow stronger uh, through one why for mm-hmm. all. And we have a couple different themes that we start to direct a lot of our work from, at least definitely from an external standpoint. Um, we focus a lot on food inequality. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have YMCA's that focus really heavily on trying to make sure that, especially in Pittsburgh, as great as Pittsburgh is, we still look at the number of households and a number of the percentage of the city where there are food deserts in place. Uh, I think the number is 40% of, of Pittsburgh residents are food insecure. That's that's a sad, sad statistic. Um, so we focus on... So on, elaborate yeah. on what food insecure means. Food insecure means you don't have enough, you don't have adequate, you don't have healthy enough food for you and your family. There are entire communities. 40% in the city. 40% in the city of Pittsburgh. So when you look at it and say, you know, the number of communities where you can't, where there are no grocery stores close, or the number of places throughout the city where there is a local maybe market, but there are no fresh vegetables. Um, We all take a lot for granted In our lives, we're all doing relatively well, and we can get in our car at any given time and just go drive to the store and pick up whatever else you want. Um, But that's not... That's not the reality of many communities that we have in Pittsburgh. And many of our wives now, we have urban gardens in place. And the urban gardens help to make sure that we are helping local residents be able to grow their own um, in a way where it's it's affordable and it's accessible. We have an urban garden in our Hazelwood Y. Um, we have two housing uh, locations, the Allegheny Y and the Center Avenue Y. Both of those facilities have urban gardens that are um, that are managed by the residents who live there because those residents are looking for healthy food. Um, we have an urban garden actually in our in our barrel YMCA. And so you would think, okay, barrel, you know, or, or the, the, the location in Wexford, well, that's a community that has a lot of stuff. But at the same time, whenever you can start to get people in charge of their own food, their own nutrition, uh, or to better enhance their own food and nutrition, then you're doing the right thing. So, so the food disparity is one thing, or food insecurity is one thing for us. The other one is health disparities. We know that there's a great degree of disparity in place between communities of affluence and communities that are under-resourced between access to healthy ways and healthy outlets, uh, healthy food. Uh, so that's another big area for us. And then the other, and then the third one for us is achievement gap. And it's a little bit of a cliche right now, but that doesn't change the reality of the need. And what we know is that there are communities in place where schools are struggling, um, where kids don't have the same advantages as kids in other communities that are doing well. So we think that the why, we know that the why can be and has been an advocate for helping to bridge that gap. Kevin, pick a tool or a tip you'd offer that'll help our audience tell their story, craft their message, or communicate to internal and external target audiences. You talked a lot about how the communication has to happen internally so that everybody knows that if somebody wants to swim and they're two miles from one location that has a pool, but they're right up the street from one that doesn't, you need to be talking about that. Whatever you think might help our listeners from a tool or tip standpoint. Um, I think... Uh, a couple things come to mind. I'm going to go back and rehash what you had said about Simon Sinek. I think you can't say enough about the simplicity of that work, you know, just starting with why. Yeah. If you ask why enough times, you'll eventually get to the point of what's your crucial 
business proposition of what's going to make your organization work or not work. And I, and I think that's the biggest challenge, just trying to get organizations to ask enough whys to get to the point where if somebody's not uncomfortable a little bit, then you still have one or two more whys mm-hmm. to ask out there. <clears throat> so that's that's the first thing I would say. The second one, and we talk about this a lot, especially I think this is really poignant in not-for-profits. You're always selling. Everything that we do, we're always selling. For some reason, not-for-profits get a little kind of wigged out sometimes when we start to talk about sales in a not-for-profit organization. And the way I try to relate it to to our leaders is um, I believe we have a great product. <clears throat> our product, and we have a couple different products, <clears throat> excuse me, but I believe we have a great product. And that product is, in most cases, it's membership, or it can be, you know, our summer camp program. Um, it can be a swimming program. And I believe wholeheartedly that we deliver that product at a way where it can help people at a very, very basic foundational level. So membership, and I'll kind of give you my own little quick story to it. Um, As a YMCA employee, uh, sometimes it's really hard for us to stay, to really walk the walk because you work so many hours and you do everything that you want to do that sometimes when you finally get some time off, the last place you want to be is inside your own building running on your own treadmill. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I'd gotten into this really bad pattern of not working out and just work and work and work and doing everything I could for the organization, as we call it, for the movement, because we're, we're lifers in this thing. And, and back in October, I'd gotten some blood work done and had every marker for um, pre-diabetes, for, for, I had every marker for diabetes, high blood pressure, all of that stuff. Um, and the doctor who did the work for me, he said, and you work for the Y, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so starting in November, um, I started working out, starting, and I I still eat pretty much the same food that I was eating before, but now I'm just more active. So from November 1 to now, 15 pounds less. I'm not having the, the chest pains that I was having. I, and, and if you're going to deal with the stresses of the workplace, you've got to be able to have some type of an outlet. And for me, mm-hmm. it's, it's the exercise, which is the outlet. So going back to my point, in, in my particular case, this great product that we have is membership. And I truly believe that anyone who is dealing with any type of ailment, physical, mental, whatever, that membership is the tool that's going to help them have a healthier balance in their life. That the product that we have in our YMCAs, our people, our programs, our services, that those are great products. Now, if I believe in that, how dare I not tell somebody about it? How dare I not want to get your information when you come in the door and you inquire about membership? How dare I not get your information so I can be able to follow up with you? How dare I not call you back and say, you know, hey, Dave, I know, you know, you came in two weeks ago and you're interested in membership. You know, have you given it some more thought? That's a cultural change for our organization. Of, you know, for many years, I've always believed that YMCAs, and I still believe that 90% of the Ys across the country are still the same way. We're, we're kind of this field of dreams organization. We believe that if we build a happy Y and just wait, people will come. Mm-hmm. We have to be proud of your product. Whatever your product is, if you're working for it, then I would hope that you believe in it to whatever degree. And that from that point on, you want to get people engaged in that product. So I guess the advice that I would say is you have to do something that you believe in, whether it's, you know, selling water bottles or selling memberships. It's all about believing in what you do and being able to emote that passion for that belief and share that passion with somebody else to get them engaged. That's Kevin Boulding, the new CEO of the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh, and we are on the No BS Marketing Show. For you, the listeners of the No BS Show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download 
and a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Over 180,000 titles to choose from, including that Elon Musk book that I've been listening to, which I love and would recommend. And Suzanne, you've been listening to him? Uh, yeah, the Ander- I downloaded the Anderson Cooper book. It's awesome. Got to give it a try. So you go to, uh, what do we got, Suzanne? What do we? It's uh, audiblefreechild.com slash no BS. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kevin, it's time to keep calm and hit the bullseye. I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. You tell me which one you like and why, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit the bullseye. All right, let's roll. Nationwide is on your side or all state, the good hands people. Nationwide, they're on my side. It's it's personal. It's it's all about me. And Peyton Manning sings the song. Yeah. You're a Peyton Manning fan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Nationwide. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. yeah. Chicken yeah. parm, you taste so Ch- good. Right, 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 I got it, I got it now, yeah. <laughs> Since we brought it up earlier and we're both uh, basketball fans, and now is the time we are in the midst of the NBA Finals, LeBron James or Steph Curry? Mm. <laughs> Stumped St- for the first time. The Steph, Steph. Okay. Uh, m- I think more magical. On any given night, Steph could put up twenty, or he could put up fifty. Just much more magical. I think LeBron is probably the better player over the long term, but for this window of time, it's all about Steph. Doritos for the bold or Lay's. Bet you can't eat just one. Oh, it's all about Lay's. Lay's, you, right? Because you can't. You, you, man, you got you grab them a handful at a time, yeah. and then you go to the Y and you work it off. <laughs> <laughs> so you're eating those chips and Rhonda's taking them from you. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do you like chip dip? No, no, Just don't mess it up. Straight up chips. Yeah, right, right, don't mess it up. Don't yeah. mess it straight up. Straight up chip. Right. Okay, now we're going to go with uh, two efficiency-type products, both uh, reasonably well-known, although I was on a conference call a couple weeks ago, and someone asked me what the first one was, and I was kind of surprised. But if you don't use either, just give me your general opinion from a messaging standpoint, which mm-hmm. one has conveyed to you what they are better. And if you don't know either, that's great, too, because then that means they didn't convey it well. <laughs> right. Dropbox or Google Docs? Dropbox. It's clear. It's simple. You know exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. Beyonce or Jay-Z? Ooh, come on. <laughs> I'm a... 40-something-year-old male. It's all about Beyonce, right? <laughs> are you going tomorrow? No, no, tonight. It's, it's tonight. tonight. That's it's right. tonight, yeah. I don't know a lot of guys that just go to a Beyonce concert, right? We'll sure. watch it on HBO, but yeah, we don't. Exactly. Right? We're not going to go there and say, oh, yeah, Beyonce. Right. <laughs> See, I, a couple of shows ago, I had to admit uh, right. an embarrassing thing that, like, I'll watch Britney when she's on. Yeah, right. And I used right. to watch her when yeah. she's on. I'm yeah. like, don't tell my buddy. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I'll watch it. Right. I won't tell anybody, but I'll watch it. We're going to move into the sights and sounds of marketing. And this episode, Sights and Sounds of Marketing, focuses on diet a little bit. And Kevin just touched on that and how the YMCA can help. Uh, It's uh, about how McDonald's appears to be copying Chick-fil-A to improve customer service by investing billions in wage increases and training for their workers. The fast food chain lifted its average hourly wage from $9 to $9.90 last July and will raise it further to exceed $10 by the end of this year. McDonald's also started allowing workers to earn up to five days of paid vacation every year and invested in training with the implementation of new procedures like Ask, Ask, Tell to speed up drive through service. Now, think about that. Ask, Ask, Tell ties back to your point about asking more. One of your tips was ask why. And another one of your points was how your team has to be able to talk about the different services at the different whys. McDonald's is trying to do that nationwide by having Ask Ask Tell to speed up drive through service. The training and wage investments have had a significant impact on customer service, according to McDonald's CEO Steve Easterbrook, who says the changes have, quote, resulted in lower crew turnover and higher customer satisfaction scores. The data to back it up, they're up 6% in the first quarter compared to the same period last year on the customer satisfaction side. Mm -hmm. The strategy of investing more in training and career development has proven to be massively successful for companies like Chick-fil-A, who consistently ranks first in restaurant customer service surveys. In reviews, customers rave about Chick-fil-A's cleanliness, quick, convenient service, and hardworking employees. 
Highly regarded customer service is uncommon in fast food, an industry notorious for paying low wages. But Chick-fil-A doesn't pay much more than the industry average. The company pays about $8.44 an hour, according to Glassdoor. The average hourly wage in the fast food industry is $7.98, according to Payscale, so not much more. Chick-fil-A says its service is so consistent because it invests more than other companies in training its employees and helping them advance their careers, regardless of whether those careers are in fast food. Franchisees are encouraged to ask their new hires what their career goals are and then to try to help them achieve those goals, tying back to Kevin's recommendation and tip about continually asking people why. The company also offers leadership positions in all of its restaurants that come with higher pay as well as greater responsibilities. Crew members can work their way toward director positions in marketing, cleanliness, etc. Now, I'm not here just saying Chick-fil-A is perfect. They certainly aren't. They have some PR issues. I'm using it as an example uh, to talk about your thoughts on the approach of Chick-fil-A and now McDonald's following suit with training and making it about them, their workers. That's my key pointer. I'm not here to say I'm this big Chick-fil-A fan. I'm here saying... Is it making about them training and asking your employees why? How do you feel about that? How can you apply it to the why? I agree completely with everything that they're doing and everything that you've said. I think the the thing that we've already started to try to share a lot within our organization is, um, as we talked about our the numbers of employees and the number of full time to part time, we are primarily a part time based organization. Um, we are very much a grassroots based organization. We have a, a leadership staff team of about thirteen people um, at our <clears throat> at our main office. And the big message that we've been trying to share at that with that group is it's really not about us. That. It's the branches, it's the work that's happening in the field in each one of the local communities that really drives the identity of, of, our, of our operation. And now if you take that down even further, the message that I've been sharing with our branch executives is it's really not about them. <laughs> that the people who are most directly interacting with our members, our program participants, are the housekeeping staff. Are the instructors teaching a you know a group exercise class or swim class? Um, so when we focus on the development of that group, that will dictate very heavily how well our members feel that the why is um, really attuned to their needs. Um, I talked a little bit before about our strategic plan. Um, the fourth pillar of our strategic plan that I didn't talk about is leadership development because all the other wonderful stuff, you know, growing and developing our membership through strong programs and, you know, the philanthropy piece and, 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 and you know, organizational strength, none of that happens if we don't have a good, if we're not developing and investing in our leaders. Um, what you talked about with Chick-fil-A, all, every organization out there understands that turnover is, 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 the Achilles heel to any type of organization's growth, especially turnover that you're not leading. <laughs> um, when you have to constantly go back and, and train and retrain and create a culture and recreate a culture, what you're not doing is growing. So the more that you can invest in that on the front end, uh, I believe wholeheartedly that you're creating an organization that's going to be stronger and, and more attuned to the end consumer's needs. That's Kevin Bowling, the new CEO of the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh. Now, since Morgan Spurlock's movie Super Size Me came out in 2004, Kevin, we'll make that the year of today's Sights and Sounds of Marketing. Spurlock gained 25 pounds in 30 days eating only McDonald's food, and the company changed its menu as a result of backlash from the movie. Other Sights and Sounds of 2004 include... Since we already brought her, her up once, we'll bring her up again. And with uh, the, the <laughs> untimely death about a month ago, Prince and Beyonce performed together at the Grammys in 2004. Now, they performed again a couple of years later, but the first time was 2004. Do you remember it? I remember that. And, and I'll, 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 I'm going to fast forward way all the way up to just last year with a, with a quick Prince thing. So last year, I was at a Y conference in Minneapolis. And they told us, well, on the last night of the conference, they always do something really big and, 
And so they arranged for us all to go to Paisley Park (laughs) to be able to just go there. And they told us, hey, don't expect for Prince to come out. Don't don't even get your hopes up. He may not even be there. So and it was all these rules that you had to go through. There's no phones that could go in. Your phones had to stay on the bus. This had to stay on the bus. You just basically take yourself in there, listen to some music and leave. And. And my 45-year-old brain kicked in at that time and said, man, I'm tired. I'm just going to know. I'll I'll check him out another time, just in case. So apparently, people got over there, and somewhere around (gasps) 1.30, 2 o'clock, he definitely came on out, sang a quick song, told everybody bye-bye, and I missed it. (laughs) Oh, man. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, yeah. Feeling horrible about it, but yeah, great times. You mm. could, you could put Prince in probably every year between now and gosh, when when is it, going back to Purple Rain and before? Yeah, almost every year you can have a Prince being Prince being a, a pretty big part of that particular year. No question. Agree. Sights and Sounds of Marketing 2004, from a messaging standpoint, this was huge. Low carb diets like Atkins and South Beach are all the rage. Do you remember when you'd go to work and everybody was coming in with their stuff and talking about that? Yeah, I had a friend of mine who was on the Atkins diet. Was that the one where you could just eat a a ton of swine and and meat and everything, but you just couldn't have, right? That was the no carb thing, right? that's exactly. Yeah, he... This guy, he would just eat just huge slabs of meat every day, all you know, three <laughs> three meals a day, and I just kept saying, "My goodness, that must be must be great, but you must also give Metamucil a run for their money." <laughs> <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> and the last sights and sounds of marketing from the year two thousand four, you were in Detroit at the time, and the Detroit Pistons beat the L.A. Lakers with Shaq and Kobe in the NBA Finals, ending that Lakers run forever. That was a good one. I, yeah, I remember that one. That was that was that was a great team, and the city the city really needed a win at that time too. Um, and having that excitement in the city was just absolutely incredible. Yeah, I, I remember that when you when you're driving up into Detroit, there's a couple. Um, um, gas and oil refineries that are kind of off on the left hand side of the road driving up 75 and so you know the big round I guess repositories where they store everything uh-huh. they painted them as basketballs so they're really cool when you're driving them I think they're still the same way to, today Wow! So, yeah. just a sensational team Chauncey Billups, Chauncey Billups. Tayshawn Prince yeah. Richard B- B- Hamilton B- 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 Billups yeah. that was it and then Wallace <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, and then that team that they beat was on the verge of becoming the greatest of all time if Shaq and Kobe could have gotten along. Now, Kobe was able to win two more later with the Lakers, and Mm -hmm. Shaq was able to win one with Miami, but wow. So, Kevin, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? Uh, I think best way is is probably through email. It's uh, kbolding at ymcapgh.org. Uh, I think our Y is doing a lot of good stuff, and you know we're fortunate to be in a city that is as supportive as Pittsburgh is. Uh, we have a um, foundation community that is probably tops in the country, and they've been so great with us with supporting so much of our work. And I think anybody that wants to learn a little bit more about what we do and how we do it and communities we're trying to serve, please reach out. You have a great personal story to tell with the promotion as the new CEO. You've got uh, We Are Lucky to Have You Rhonda, your wife, and now Kira here in Pittsburgh. So, Kevin, thanks for being on the show. Glad to be here. Thank you. And for our listeners, thanks for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show. Visit BoldSolutionsNoBS.com for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Sign up for Light Reading. You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less. And it just might trigger bright ideas for you to sign up. Visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.